good morning everyone so in the last class we started with the connected graphs we say that two vertices are connected if there exists a path between the vertices u and v and then a graph is connected if every pair of the vertices in the graph is connected which means that between every pair of vertices there exists a path otherwise the graph is disconnected so we begin with the following theorem a graph is bipartite if and only if it has no odd cycles so we assume that the graph is connected because if it is not connected then we have to prove for each component the graph is bipartite or each component is bipartite so instead of that we assume that there is only one component and this is why we assume the graph is connected now one side it's easy which says that if graph is bipartite then it has no odd cycles because if you see any bipartite graph you can make as many vertices in the set as you want now if you consider this graph then to have a cycle you move from one set to the other set because you cannot move within the set since the graph is bipartite so if there is an edge then it has one end point in set a and the other end point in set b so let's say you start with u now from u you goes to this vertex then this then this then this then this and at some point of the time you have to come back to u it means that when you consider this round trip then its length is always even because the odd length is required to go from a to b and if you have to come back to set a to any vertex the length is always even this always forms an even cycle and this is why if the graph is bipartite it has no odd cycles now if we see the other way around then we have to prove that if it has no odd cycle then the graph is bipartite which means that the graph can be partitioned into two sets x and y and having the properties of the bipartiteness to begin with what we assume that let us say that there is a vertex u so we fix this vertex and define two sets the sets are as follows x has all those vertices such that the length of uv path is old so u is fixed now whenever you draw the graph of course since the graph is connected so from u to v either the length of the path is old or even based on old and even it goes to set x or set y now to show that graph is bipartite we are assuming that it can be partitioned into two vertex sets x and y and such that we have to show x union y should be equal to v this is a disjoint union which means x intersection y is equal to 5 and the last thing is that there should not be any edge within x or y so there are no edges with both ends in x or y these three things we need to prove now the first one is easy which is which says that x union y is equal to v this is because the graph is connected since the graph is connected between every pair of the vertices there is a path it means that there is always a path from u to any other vertex now based on the length of the path there are only two option either the length of the path is old or even it means all the remaining vertices either goes to x or goes to y the length of the path from u to u is zero and based on this we can say that x union y is equal to v the other property we need to prove is that x intersection y should be equal to 5 to prove it we use the concept of contradiction which means that we assume that x 
intersection y is not equal to phi. We start with the contradiction and we must reach to the contradiction. Now what does it mean? It means that there must exist a vertex in x intersection y. This means that w belongs to x and w belongs to y. Now w belongs to x, it means that u to w, so if I fix u, so from u to w, there is a path of odd length. And from u to w, there is also a path of even length because w belongs to y. This odd even forms an odd walk. Directly we can also say it forms an odd cycle. But it has been assumed that the graph has no odd cycle, which is a contradiction. So this is the second property. The last property is, let's assume x, y is an edge which belongs to capital X. Now x, y is an edge which means that from u there is a path to x, from u there is a path to y and these paths are old. If it belongs to capital Y which means from U there is a path to X and Y which is even and XY is also an edge. In both the cases again you can see that we have an old cycle which leads to a contradiction and this is why all three properties holds for X and Y and therefore the graph is bipartite. Now let's discuss a very interesting question which says that consider a simple graph with 20 vertices. Any two distinct vertices in U and V are such that degree U plus degree V is greater than 18. Prove or disprove graph is connected. So to disprove it, we need to come up with a counter example which do not satisfy this statement. And to prove it, we need to give a general proof. Producing a counter example is also not easy because the graph is of 20 vertices, the order 20. So let's try to prove it. Again we use the concept of contradiction. Which means that let's assume graph is not connected. Now what does it mean it is not connected? It means that it has at least two components. So just for the convenience assume that it has two components. So G has two components G1 and G2. Yes. Now let's assume the order of G1 is K which means the order of G2 is 20 minus K. Now order is K it means that any vertex in G1, let's say U belongs to G1, then the maximum degree of U is K minus 1. Yes, it can be adjacent to all other vertices and the graph is simple. Therefore, U can be adjacent to at most K minus 1 vertices. And similarly, if I assume V belongs to G2, then degree V is at most 90 minus K. It means that degree U plus degree V is at most K minus 1 plus 19 minus K which is 80. Which is a contradiction because it is given that degree U plus degree V is strictly greater than 18. So we start with a contradiction we reach to a contradiction which means that the graph must be connected. The next result is for a simple graph with n vertices and k components the maximum number of the edges is n minus k n minus k plus 1 by 2. If we assume that there is only one component then the maximum of the edges is n n minus 1 by 2 since the graph is simple which means 
the complete graph. The proof is quite easy to follow. We just have to assume that each component, the maximum number of the edges are ni, ni minus 1 by 2. We use the summation and then we use some algebraic property to prove it. So since the proof is not very graph theoretical, I am not going into the detail of the proof, but it is important to remember the maximum number of the edges in a simple graph. The next concept is vertex deletion, edge deletion, which we have already discussed. So consider this graph. If I delete the vertex u, then all the edges which are incidenting to u also get deleted because edges must have the endpoints. But when you delete an edge, then the vertices do not get deleted. So you can see the difference between vertex deletion and edge deletion. Once it is clear, then we can move to the concept of cut vertex and cut edge. So vertex is a cut vertex if g minus v has more components than g. It means that let us consider the following graph 1, 2, 3, 4. If you delete the vertex 2, then the remaining graph is. So initially there was only one component, but after deleting 2, there are two components and therefore 2 is a cut vertex. Similarly, if I consider the another graph, then then after deleting vertex 1, we can see that the number of the components are 3. Again, the number of the components get increased. So 1 is a cut vertex. Let's consider one more graph, 1, 2, 3, 4. In this graph, you delete any of the vertex whichever you want, but after deletion, you realize that the number of the components do not get increased. Therefore, this graph has no cut vertex. Similarly, we can define the concept of cut edge, which is also known as bridge. If I consider the same graph and if I delete the edge 1, 2, then the remaining graph is 1 remains here and 2, 3, 4. Again, the number of the components get increased and therefore 1, 2 is a cut edge. But if you see this graph, then it has no cut edge. So for this example, we can see that V5 and V3, they both are cut vertex and V5, V6 is, is an cut edge. So let us consider a simple connected graph of order n and xy is an edge in g. Then xy is a bridge if and only if n is greater than or equal to degree x plus degree y. Again the question is prove or disprove. So to disprove produce a counter example. To prove you have to prove from both the sides. So consider the example of c5 simplest example. Now consider any two vertices here or an any edge here for example this edge whose degree is 2 and this edge whose degree is 2. So this is x and this is y. Now degree x plus degree y is equal to 4 but n is equal to 5. So n is 5 degree x degree y is equal to 2 which means n is greater than 2 plus 2 but xy is not in bridge which is a counter example to this and therefore the above statement is not correct. Next is digraph connectivity. So recall the concept of directed graph. In the directed graph 
now we can talk of the directed walk then directed path directed trail directed cycle and so on weakly connected so a directed graph is weakly connected if it is underlying graph is connected for example if i draw this graph which is a digraph its underlying graph is this one which is connected and therefore the given directed graph is weakly connected but we say that a directed graph is strongly connected if between every pair of the vertices there is a directed walk or directed path from u to v so this is very important because if you consider u and v and consider this graph then this is not strongly connected because there is a path from u to v but there is no path from v to u if i consider this directed graph then it is strongly connected so which of the following graphs are strongly connected try it yourself both the graphs are weakly connected because their underlying graph are connected but which one of them are strongly connected so if you see the first one then from this vertex u you can go to v but there is no path to move from v to u but in the other case from here you can go like this and from here also you can go like this so in the second graph between every pair of the vertices there is a directed path but in the first graph it is not therefore the second graph is strongly connected while the first graph is not strongly connected So in the next class we will discuss the concept of graph isomorphism thank you.